Okay. Yeah, you get Twitch chat up and running. Do a little bit of audio check <laughs> on Twitch. Why does it say we're not live? I am live. I know I'm live. Don't lie to me, Twitch. We're live. It says check this out from 17 seconds ago. Oh, look, now we're live. Okay. Wait a minute. I think the audio is off. What? Our audio? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Should we talk? Yeah, let me see here. Mm -hmm. This is a test of the talking system. We're talking. Yeah, let me uh let me get Okay, now this is a test. Oh. That's still looking really weird. I don't know if that's uh if that's whereby or if that's us. That, that could be me. I hear it. I hear it. Okay. To play again. So in that case, I think we could just go. Let's see. One more. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That is it correct that we should just go because I can hear it. All right. Okay. Ready? And it's not delayed or anything on Twitch. I mean, it, I mean, it's no. The audio and the mouse move at the same time. Okay. But um, we are whatever we, delay we are, we're we're delayed. Like whatever, five seconds, ten seconds. For some reason, it's capturing the cursor. Mm -hmm. Let me let me kill this. Capture method on that. <clears throat> why why are you capturing the mouse? I don't want to be that guy that has a, a mouse cursor up. Uh, and I <sighs> keeps returning to origin. All right, this is gonna be super annoying. Oh, we're pretty good. We're pretty. We're live. We're live enough. Yeah, we're definitely live. But I'm leaving the cursor on the screen like a like a middle school science teacher. I don't see it. Um, not anymore. Mm -hmm. But now I've got to figure out a way to mute this application. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I think, yeah, I think that'll work. Okay. We should be good now. <clears throat> are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh, where are you? Okay. Gotta, <clears throat> where's record? Okay. I gotta. Yeah, we got to remember where everything is now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I have my button on record. Okay. 244, you ready? Um, let me get my mute button up because I'm bad at podcasting. Input devices. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 244 of the security podcast here on the In30 Network. I'm Haim Cohen. It should say it right down there. And Tom is, I think, that way. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Right, uh -huh. right here. It says Tom, right, right down there somewhere. And look at that amazing uh, uh, Zoom background. Just got to say that. Yeah. That's the yeah. new hotness. So you can now put me in really awful positions talking about stuff. Like, like I could do this. I could be like, look at whatever's here. This is great. This is awesome. And they could be like, oh. I'm not and now you can turn that into something awful. Yeah, I I did something really bad a few months ago. I had a I got a free webcam from somebody and I just and I saw that there were price gouging on the webcams and I, I'm not proud of myself, but I took advantage of that. I left it <laughs> I I did a buy it now for 150. So I sold the Logitech uh whatever C it's an HD1 C920 for 150. I think they retail for 80. But I mean they're going from literally anything that relates to working from home has skyrocketed in price. It is unbelievable. Webcams, uh microphones, green screens, uh, puzzles for the kids, anything at home. It's just, you cannot find Legos. It's, it's, I don't know. I'm in New Jersey where our, where our trend line is down. I'm in fact going to the beach tomorrow, the socially distant beach, but I am going to the beach. So Tom is stuck in Chaz somewhere, not to be political, but you are somewhere in Chaz. <laughs> I, I am stuck somewhere in, uh, in the Seattle that is currently on fire. <laughs> so, Anyway, I know we haven't been around for a while. The problem is, is that we don't want to bring you uh, things that like there's a flaw in open SSL, which there isn't right now. Not yet. I don't know, but that's not really going to help you. So it's, we're all home. It's uh, even the hackers, even the hackers are socially distanced and not doing anything. So there's no real news to report on. So I'm. Um, like I said, I like the fact that everyone liked uh, our Office 365 episode and we got a lot of positive feedback on that. So let's just continue with other stuff. And our main topic, we'll get to there in a minute, is going to be coffee. But we just have some couple of updates. Indeed. So the first one is, and again, we've beaten a dead horse with this, is that Zoom is backtracking and saying everyone gets end-to-end uh, -end encryption. So awesome i'm happy with that that makes me happy so as much as we hated sort zoom of. well tom's gonna explain yeah, why that's of. not so i don't know why because spammers spammers don't care whether or not their spam is end-to-end -end encrypted and so they're guarding it against spammers using end-to-end -end encryption for whatever reason and uh now to use it, you have to verify your account with like a phone number or something like you have to go through this weird validation process to to even enable end to end encryption. You don't just get it out of the box, which is really, really stupid. But, you know, what can you do? It's it's Zoom. Whatever. I mean, I guess I'm already verified because my uh, school got us all. Not, I guess they're not free accounts. They're basic accounts. I, I don't know what the difference yeah. is. Um, if it's paid up at all, you don't have to go through these shenanigans. I mean, I, I have no idea what they did. The problem is, is that I don't think, I think when this is all over, we're going to find other ways to talk because I, I finished school today. Today was the last day of school for me. I do not want to be on Zoom ever again. I want to be done. And I think a lot of us feel that way. We're done with the Zoom calls and everything else. So if you're using it for your work and everything else, it's going to continue. But as soon as uh, the kids, we figure out what school's going on, I, I have a feeling that many of the personal uses are going to go back to WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or FaceTime or some other more personable thing than Zoom. I don't think we're going to be Zooming or for that much longer. Or Discord. Um, I've been doing a lot of calls on Discord. And um, just so you know, because this is a security show, it's not end to end encrypted at all. Everything's going through HTTPS, but the company can read everything you type, everything you say, all that stuff, because it does route through their server. So just know that. But I still view Discord as kind of a less shady, uh, like way less shady than Zoom. So we'll see. I will say that we hear these stories and I I want to believe that Zoom is trying. So they were like super duper shady 
and then they're like we're sorry and then did something shady again and then oh we're sorry and okay i think we're done doing something shady and oh we're gonna offer encryption oh but not for you okay and then okay for you but you got to do this it's look we don't want to bash on zoom they i i i mean i think if you watch their markets, they're saying they're been, they basically have been a beta tested publicly for security vulnerabilities and they had to respond to everything. Whereas other platforms have years and years and years where it's drips and drabs. Here's Zoom all in once when we have nothing else to do and hear about it. So look, I'm going to say that, yes, it's end to end encrypted. I, I personally just don't really care because I'm not doing end to end encrypted type things on Zoom. Um, but your mileage may vary. Again, look at what you're trying. Look at your threat model and go accordingly. Indeed. Anything else on that? Uh, not, not really. I mean, if if you're forced into using Zoom, fine. If you use it because you choose to, also fine. Depending on your threat model and what you care about. Um, I don't let Zoom software touch any any piece of of my infrastructure just because it's. They have had some really, really nasty gaffes in the past, and I just don't want to put up with being, you know, part of the next one. So it's not worth it to me. Uh, I I let it work on my iPad and then my school laptop. Both of those, the iPad is pretty sandboxed. I think, I think so, and the school laptop, I don't really care, and it's segmented on a different part of my network. So whatever they want to do. So anyway, yeah. we have that. Something came across today. Um, you're not going to really be able to deal with it, but we'll talk about it anyway. It's called Ripple 20. It's an IoT type vulnerability. Uh, basically, it's this package of library. It's a library. Uh, IoT devices have been just pulling it and using it, and there are major problems with it. And the short answer is you can update it's fixed if your device can update. Yeah, so it's it's a TCP IP stack specifically built for um, devices that don't have a lot of power behind them. So perfect for IoT devices. Uh, unfortunately, if you have a vulnerability in your TCP IP stack, it's usually pretty serious, and these are. Um, so if you're impacted by the set of Ripple 20 vulnerabilities, um, you know, that's that's bad. You should probably update if you can. And that's that's the catch. A lot of these IoT devices, uh, you know, the companies have gone out of business or they're not providing security updates or it's a product with a, an end of life that's already passed. Um, that's the issue with a lot of these IoT devices is, you know, the things security researchers have been saying since the beginning of IoT, like, hey, wouldn't it be a bad thing if these devices went out into the wild and never got updates and then they're just sitting there being zombies to whatever botnet has taken them over today? Um, yeah, and it turns out they, they do, it's happening. Uh, so we're going to offer our standard advice, which is stick to the big names, stick to the big players. You know, I, I know we all love rooting for the underdog and the indie company and the tiny startup, but don't, don't roll those dice with IOT. You need a company that's going to be around and going to support the product line for a very long time. So yeah, it might not have all the nifty newest features. Yeah, it might be a little bit more expensive. But when you buy Philips Hue light bulbs, you know, Philips has been in this game for a while. They're going to keep supporting this stuff. They're going to keep pushing out patches. And that's really what you need in an IoT device. You need supportability and maintainability. I was talking about Philips Hue. Their Gen 1 hub is being deprecated, but yeah. they haven't sold a Gen <laughs> 1 hub in a very long time. Um, it's... It's again. We you see these uh, spam headlines that say, "Oh, get a plug-in uh, w- wireless or whatever, a smart plug for ten dollars or whatever it is," and you want to jump on it. And they tell you all these awesome things, but that's probably something that's using this library, and that's the problem you're going to have. So, again, you want to stick to the big people. Um, it's my house. I'm an Amazon household. Others are Google households, and. I like to stick to where they have all the integrations, but I also check to make sure everything is updated. And then the other problem is if you look at your phone, you have all these different apps. So pick an ecosystem that has everything and go from there. So you have one app to control everything rather than, oh, I need this for that. And I need this for the lights and I need this for the other thing. And 
and we're gonna go from there so i got nothing else on that it's it's a bad vulnerability but either updated or you have to figure out what you're gonna do there uh i'm gonna go just let's jump into our main topic so again those are the two security things that we have nothing really special but uh we need something to talk about and we decide that we should talk about coffee like just coffee like the greatest one of the greatest drinks ever created that wakes us up keeps us going has zero calories from start and is just good now tom is much more of how to process coffee so while he's getting ready let's just talk i'll t- talk about myself so coffee is not that hard to make good but it's really hard to make it exceptional so if you're one of the type of people who go to starbucks or dunkin donuts over here or wherever and you're paying two three four dollars for a coffee you can do way better and it doesn't take that much so my recommendation very first is go buy yourself a little mr coffee type drip coffee maker Buy yourself some, it doesn't have, it could be your Publix beans or your Wegmans beans or your Walmart beans, even the ground ones. Get some good water. So if you want to boil it a little bit or use filtered water, that's fine. And just try it. Like You'll make really good coffee that's about 50 cents a cup. And if you do that, I mean, that is the bare minimum. You'll get your coffee. You'll you'll be up there. And then you can take it the next step and you can try different beans and everything else. Um, then I... My personal setup is I have a it's it's a it's a, it grinds the beans directly into the hopper and then brews it. It makes fantastic coffee. It's not the best, but it's fantastic. I couple it with really cold water, which is real is is really important, and I it grinds the beans directly in there. And again, the cold water and better tasting water is going to make a huge difference. And the problem is I'm driving home and I see Dunkin' Donuts and I say, you know what? In five minutes, I'll be home, and I'll make better coffee than Dunkin' Donuts. So, Tom's Tom's yesing me. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, you're you're exactly right. Good water is pretty key to good coffee. But I'm going to offer one one thing that will elevate your coffee beyond anything else. And you hit the nail on the head: the fresh grind. Absolutely, bar none. Like better than temperature, better than roasting method, better than the the coffee bean itself. Like I can take Folgers coffee, like the I can take Maxwell House, which is my most hated coffee brand in the world. If you are fresh grinding those beans, it is going to make coffee better than anything else you have ever had. Um, it's all about that fresh grind. And you don't have to get anything nuts. Like back in the kitchen, I've got a big coffee grinder if you don't want that, if you drink, you know, a cup of coffee in the morning and you can spare the four minutes and, you know, maybe, maybe move a little bit, right? It's not a workout. Can't claim it's a workout, but for pretty cheap, you can get one of these guys, which are a handheld coffee grinder. You just throw your beans in the top. It comes with uh, this nifty, nifty little system here. Super tactical, super complex. You put it in. You get, get that beautiful grinding sound here. That is the sound of fresh ground coffee. And it's it's just amazing. You take the grounds from down here, you dump them in whatever coffee maker you've got laying around, and it's going to make better coffee guaranteed. Whole bean coffee is really the secret to great coffee. Um, if Again, you can buy a grinder, do it the week on Sunday night for the week. Um Again, it's how much time do you have in the morning? I mean, you can sit there and make the absolute greatest cup of coffee you ever had. The problem, like Tom and I, we drink a lot of coffee. So by drinking a lot of coffee, you're you're going to spend a lot of time doing it. The other thing is, uh, I'm going to throw this out, but going to Costco, going to BJ's, going to Sam's Club, whatever, buying the gigantic bag and grinding it there will still be fresher than anything a store shelf that's been sitting there. So yep. I go through about a pound a week probably a little more of coffee so you get in by the pound you grind it it lasts a week that's going to be fresh if you want to dump it into one of those mason jars that seals it it's not going to be the best thing but you know what it's it's going to be way better than getting the grounds and and going from there yeah, the thing you don't realize when when you're starting to get into coffee is that if you've been on ground coffee your entire life, you know, you dip the scoop in, 
cool. It just, it flows, right? It's like coffee sand, but fresh ground coffee is actually kind of sticky. It's kind of tacky. And uh, I just recently cleaned this. So you'll, you'll see maybe, maybe a little bit on camera here, but there's a, a tiny bit of coffee stuck to the inside of this thing. And that's because coffee beans have oil. Uh, they they kind of they sweat a little bit after the roasting process, and when you grind it, you're gonna get a little bit of that tackiness in there. That's that's actually good. That's what you want in coffee. The oil is what has all those delicious flavors in it, and that's what you're going for when you make a good cup of gel. It's again, if you're starting from the bare minimum, you got all you've been doing is going out, which. I would probably bet in, in this day and age, I would actually save money by the amount of coffee because to go out of the house to actually buy coffee for $2 or whatever, a dollar at McDonald's is probably cheaper than the 50 cents a cup times the number of cups I drink. But anyway, you can, like I said, it's very simple. Uh, it's called Americana drip coffee. That's the one that you're used to here in, in America. Whatever it is, twenty dollars. If you want it with a programmable timer, it will be thirty dollars. And even if you do get Maxwell House, and even if you do use your tap water, it's still going to be, it's going to be cheaper, and y you probably won't hate it all that much. Now, from there, you got to step up your game, whatever that means. So Tom's saying, uh, I agree with him. Grinding the beans is bar none the best thing to do. Um, Getting better water. Coffee is 90% water. So if you can boil the water the night before, whatever it is, filtered or even water. Or like a, yeah, a cheap filtering system, like one of those pitchers you put in your fridge. Mm -hmm. If you can just fill up your coffee maker, like even if you've got a Mr. Coffee, you're, you're using pre-ground Folgers. Like if you wanted to do just the bare minimum, pour from the, the filtered pitcher in the fridge instead of just from the tap directly. Uh, it's going to make... now. It's not going to make as big of a difference as fresh grinding, but it will be better, and you'll taste the difference. And then, obviously, the the ground, the 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 coffee grounds, uh, grinding the coffee and everything else. And then from there, you can start playing around with different coffee beans and figuring out if you like a mild roast or a dark roast. Uh, the the big stores that you buy from the the Seven Elevens, the Wawas, the Quick Checks by Us, McDonald's. Those are all mild ground. They are or medium ground. They are not dark. I am not a dark ground person. I do not like dark ground coffee. Um, Starbucks, Starbucks. I don't like IPAs. Don't at me. You're not going to win this. Uh, but Starbucks, Starbucks isn't isn't a, a dark roast coffee. It's more like like they threw a bunch of coffee beans in a campfire and then scooped the ashes into their coffee makers. It's not like calling it a dark roast is way too light it is it is quite literally coffee ashes it's got a real burnt taste to it and i loathe starbucks coffee it's great uh, for like the sweet fruit fruit drinks like i will be the first to admit frappuccinos are incredible they're delicious they're 90 percent sugar i want all of it in me right now but their drip coffee it's bad it's just bad so that's why when people give me Starbucks gift cards, I end up giving them to my wife and we go from there. But so again, so you get your beans, you can play with the beans as much as you want, try the different things. That's what Tom has the death wish. I have not had, but I've heard very good things. Death wish coffee is simultaneously one of the darkest coffees I've had and one of the most delicious coffees I've had. Now it's not, this isn't going to be like as, as punchy as some of some of the dark roasts that you'll get locally right if you've got a local coffee roaster next to you and i am spoiled i live in seattle it is coffee city here um and i i walk into any shop and they have got like their own blend of beans from like this one farm that you've never heard of in a country that you're not even sure it exists like it could be from wakanda man like it sounds like it came from a marvel movie and they've got a guy in the back like roasting by hand and like like a, a weird little contraption that he built in his garage and you get it and it is minutes old um if you don't have that, if you don't have access to those kinds of facilities and you don't want to pay like the 40 bucks per pound of coffee that some places in Seattle do sell, Deathwish coffee, it's pretty good quality and I like it. It's delicious. It's definitely for people who like a dark roast. If you don't like a dark roast, you're not going to like Deathwish. They're not sponsoring this episode. I've just drank them for literally a decade. 
Oh, good, because I'm not having it because it's dark roast, because I don't like dark roast. Um, but your house brand, both BJ's and Costco's house brand are excellent. Um, the mm -hmm. Costco house brand is Starbucks. I will go with that. It is Starbucks, but it's Starbucks like before the ashes. It's 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 okay. Uh, Benson and Jenkins, that's the BJ's house brand. That is okay if you're going to step it up. The Costco organic house brand, which is different than the Costco other organic house brand, is really excellent. And but again, it's the I get the beans and then I grind. I have it directly grind in. So if you're gonna, so if you buy the beans, grind it right at the end of the store, right before you leave, and then go home and do it, or buy yourself a cheap grinder. It's not that hard. It's probably thirty dollars, but again, it's what you want to do. So, just the bare minimum is going to get you decent coffee. Upgrading your water, grinding the beans ahead of time, and all that will be better. My absolute favorite coffee is Ruta Maya. It is this cult following? They go to the Costco's every once in a while, and I think I just got ten bags. My wife called me up. It's like, "There's no. Do we need coffee?" I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "This. I mean, it's these are the brands. Oh, there's some Ruta Maya. Wait, there's what?" buy the pallet so we bought 10 bags like no joke we bought 10 bags i gave i i sold i i gave some to my friends but i think we have seven i think we have seven left so they are absolutely amazing and i really do wish they sponsored the show but anyway okay so your drip coffee then we have the other one i, I hope tom has his arrow press with him of course i have my arrow press with me what kind of coffee drinker would I be if I didn't have this beautiful AeroPress? Again, there are no sponsorships on this show. This is not a commercial, and we're not being paid to do this. We're just big fans. Uh, so this guy, you can get a full kit for like 30 bucks. You can find him in uh, just about every coffee specialty store. I think even Starbucks carries these now. Um, I've seen him actually in a couple big box stores, but it's a couple pieces. You get uh, this lid. You get a pack of paper filters, which I actually don't recommend, but we'll get into that in a minute. And then you get this weird thing, this rubber stopper, which you just heard on the audio version of the podcast. And then you get this thing with a bunch of numbers on it. Ignore the numbers, fit this thing. And it looks like you're supposed to like, you know, put the grounds in and then add the water and you can do it this way, but nobody I know uses the AeroPress in the standard method. Use the inverted method. Sit this on your countertop, put the grounds in, Put in some hot water, not boiling, not cold, like just under boiling, like let it boil and then wait about a minute and you'll be good. Uh, and then you wait a little bit. Uh, you know, you can wait a minute. I wait four minutes because I really like super strong coffee. If you don't want it that extracted, cut it in half, do the two minute thing. Uh, and then what you do, you take your coffee cup and I wish I had a coffee cup here, um, but you affix this thing kind of locks in a little tight. And you quite literally just plunge this guy down. At the end of the process, you'll, you will have this tiny little disposable coffee puck. You unscrew the thing, pop it out into the trash, you're done. Like rinse it off, but then you're done. Um, now on the filters, it does come with paper filters, but I, paper takes out the oils. Like it absolutely absorbs the oils from the coffee and gets rid of some of that flavor, uh, some of that, that good bite that you want with coffee. These guys are like five bucks. You can find them just about anywhere. They are tiny stainless steel mesh filters. And this one is desperately in need of a cleaning. If you can see it that far or uh, that well over Twitch. Um, but this guy will uh, filter out the grounds. It won't let anything through. It's a very fine mesh, but it will keep the oils intact, which is really what you want in a, in a good coffee. Now, this thing... You're not going to use this at parties. You're not going to serve this for breakfast. This is a cup of coffee. It is just your personal cup. Um, so I love the AeroPress. Also, it is the best travel coffee maker you could have if you're really into coffee and traveling like I am. Um, it's magical. Now, if you're making bigger pots, you got to get yourself a super high-tech French press. I think you've all seen these. They're like maybe 10 bucks. I, they're, they're fairly cheap. Uh, I think this like name brand one was like 20 or something, but they're all basically the same. They've got a big mesh, big metal mesh thing. It's got a glass pot. Um, here's a pro tip. If you're using a French press, get yourself a little bit of kosher salt. This is a pro tip. Now, 
just take a pinch of kosher salt, throw it in the French press, and then when you make your coffee, it's going to remove some of the like badness of that bite and get you a smoother cup of coffee without introducing a salty flavor. It sounds really weird, but it totally ups your, your French press game. Now, this is amazing. Um, I also have, if you've got cold brew, you can kind of get one of these infuser things. So again, I've, I've got a desk full of coffee contraptions here. Uh, one of these, you quite literally throw the grounds in the top, filtered water in, in the big glass part, and you wait overnight. Like give it eight hours minimum, a, a good 12 is nice. And you don't have to take it out. Like you can take out the core so it stops extracting, but this thing will keep for a while. And then you've got delicious cold brew. It doesn't have any of the harshness, doesn't have any of the bite, but gives you delicious, delicious coffee. Now in the summer, this is the only thing I will drink in the morning. I'll take one of these, whip it up with some, uh, some cream and some sugar, and you've got a delicious frou-frou coffee drink ready to go. Um, I can't do I, I can't do cold coffee, like I iced I coffee is not coffee. I I can't do it. So more power to you, but I on the hottest day of the on the hottest day I will drink hot <laughs> coffee. I cannot I I cannot do it. Uh, if you are entertaining, uh, these guys are pretty cheap. You can get yourself just a standard like restaurant style carafe. Um, if you have one for tea, mark yours on the bottom with a big C. Um, and, uh, yeah, just pour it. And literally I have kept coffee piping hot for like 18 hours or something. These things are ridiculous. They are magical. Uh, and I have, I've cut back from my two pots of coffee per day, but when I was drinking it, French press right into this guy and you've got piping hot coffee all day long. Um, and then, you know, what are you going to drink it out of? You and I both recommend, and you actually turned me on to these. These Contigo mugs, these things are incredible. This will keep your coffee nice and hot all day long. Doesn't spill. It's got this cool little like locking mechanism. I love them. They're not expensive and they're magical. We did have, we do have a question and we still have, this is two years going in the WhatsApp group because we do talk about coffee okay. in the WhatsApp group was I used to pour the milk first while waiting for it to finish brewing. And then when I poured the coffee in, the coffee was colder than when I wanted. Then when I poured the coffee in first, and then the milk. Now for me, milk is is mainly, 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 mainly to cool down the coffee to an acceptable drinking temperature right away. Um, it does on really dark roast. It does take the bitterness out. So if I get a mild roast, I can drink it black, no problem. But milk, milk is just to cool it down. So when I was drinking it. When I was pouring the milk in first, I would get, I would get halfway down the road before I take my sip, and it would be lukewarm, and I would be upset. And then I switched it, and I was fine. <laughs> and there's no scientific evidence. So somebody said the there's less coffee, so the average temperature goes out. We cannot prove this. We we argue about this all the time. But I tell you, I milk think, first, then coffee. I think I've got the answer to that. So if you pour in the milk first. The, the vessel that is containing the milk is now being cooled by the milk, right? As opposed to a neutral room temperature vessel, coffee and then milk, you're going to get less cooling. Um, and that's, that is my current, current theory, unproven, untested, but we would welcome the experiments and we will welcome you to tell us that we are wrong in the WhatsApp group because we need more people doing that. Um, I do have other coffee gadgets. I know we're running a, a wee bit long, but these grinders, you know, with the oil, they get sticky, they get weird. Um, and I get, uh, I'm not gonna show the brand name, but basically these things are fake cleaning coffee beans. Uh, it's like this weird, it almost looks like vitamins or a cereal or something. They're just these like tiny, tiny beans, tiny fake beans that you throw in your grinder. You grind those up, it attaches to everything. You throw out the remaining thing, you run one thing of coffee through it, and it's good. They're, uh, they're literally designed to clean industrial coffee grinders. They are great. Um, I got this like three months ago, and I haven't run out yet. Um, it's great. Uh, the other coffee gadget, if you want espresso, if you're trying to make lattes, I wish I would have got it. I've got like a little mechanical milk frother that I hit a button and it like 
makes cappuccino foam and all that stuff and even warms up the milk. It's pretty cool. Uh, but these little mocha pots, you can get them in like this nice stovetop medium size or you can get them real tiny. Um, they make not espresso. We can't call it espresso, um, but it's got like a little espresso hopper. Throw some water in here. Do not go past the safety valve. That will be bad. Um, but you filled up to right about the safety valve, dump your coffee in. Um, don't pat it down. You don't want too much pressure in this. Throw it on the stovetop for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how high you're, you're making it and how hot your stovetop gets. And then you get nice, like uh, almost, almost espresso. And with that, you can make all kinds of cool coffee drinks. You can make your cappuccinos, you can make lattes, you can make whatever you want. And these are great. They're tiny and they work so well. I love this thing. That's uh, my, I grew up with that. The espre the we call them the espresso pop, but it's not. But that's what we. Ooh. That's what I did. That's what my dad did before before the Mister Coffees of the world. So as Tom was talking, I was generating a list of as much as as much as many of the things I could find uh, <laughs> to get you started. But the point is, do not get a Keurig or a single cup thing. It's terrible for the environment if you care about that, and it's not good. It's terrible. And, and they have DRM. They have yeah. DRM. So they force you to buy their things. And unless you're interested in hacking your coffee maker, I'd stay away from the curing. Get one of these. There's no DRM. There's not even electronics. It doesn't connect to Wi-Fi. It's made of plastic. And it will accept literally any coffee grounds or tea if you wanted to make AeroPress tea. It, it will literally just accept anything you throw in this with some hot water. That's and get the air so, press. It's way better. So I didn't realize this. So how come they do the fire inspector comes in and never flags my room for having a coffee maker? Then I realized because I'm using a thermal carafe. There's no hot plate. There's not the only hot thing is controlled by the switch that turns it on. So I was very much anti uh, thermal craft because you couldn't see inside. And then I got over myself and realized it's not boiling the coffee. It's not keeping it warm. The, the, the stainless steel is keeping it warm, which generated much better coffee. So, so I think I'm going to take whatever I have left on my Amazon uh, gift card. And I think I may buy this cold brew thing that you were t talking about. I love this thing. Now, there are two models. This is the one I don't recommend. Um, let me... It's live radio, folks. Give me, give me just oh, okay. a second. <clears throat> so, yes. Uh, so, that was the other thing. And Tom talked about how to clean all the stuff. And for me, I want quick, I want easy, and I want a lot of coffee. Because uh, before the show, we were talking about how much coffee I actually drink. And I can't make five arrow cups in a morning. But now Tom's exactly. showing us his thing. So here's another cold brew. Now this one, uh, I would recommend a Japanese brand. Now this is, um, I do not recommend the Cali homebrew. The mesh on this is a little, a little too wide. So you get some sediment in the bottom of your cold brew. I've got to throw out like the bottom little bit because it's, it's literally just sediment. It is, it is not great. But this, um, this is a Hario. I am butchering that pronunciation i'm sorry um but it is a japanese brand it's got a super super fine mesh filter here this is the one i recommend it's taller it's a little bit more fiddly it's a little bit more wobbly this is going to be more stable um but this makes way better coffee with way less sediment and i love this thing um what i usually do because in the summertime i will go through one of these every couple days is i will literally just fill this one up, you know, uh, fill them both up. And then when I drink down one, um, I start on the other one. And that way I've always got, you know, cold brew coffee in rotation. I am never without my cold brew. Now, let's say you're in a spot where you don't have beans, you don't have coffee, you barely have hot water, right? You, you are in a camping situation and you need some coffee right now. There's a lot of instant coffees out there, but the one I can recommend, especially in an emergency, is the G7 instant coffee. Uh, now this, I believe is a, a Vietnamese product. Um, I got like a hundred pack of them, but to make a standard cup of coffee, you'll need to throw in two of these large tubes into coffee uh, or into, uh, into your water. Otherwise it's gonna be really thin and not, not great. Uh, but for instant coffee, 
This is the very best that I found. Now it's coffee, creamer, and sugar all in dust form in one tube. Uh, so it's it's a little weird. I'm not gonna lie. The the taste is definitely a little weird, but it is the best instant coffee I've ever had. And if that fits your use case, if you need something like either as a coffee emergency backup, like society has collapsed, you need a cup of coffee, this stuff is going to be good. Um, and it's going to be way better than the instant Folgers or instant Maxwell house or the Nespresso's or anything else. I've had them all. The G7 is my preferred instant coffee. That said, the instant coffee, not the route I would go. But if you have to, it's there. So. And we didn't even touch on Turkish coffee and all the other stuff, but yeah. this is just because I really do like Turkish coffee. But again, I, I need coffee in my body as soon as humanly possible. But look, I'm hoping you take some of this uh, and figure out where you want to start. I, I suggest start small. Um, like I said, I would, st I would start with the Mr. Coffee Pot. That's what I did mm -hmm. and go from there. Uh, then I would probably go to the AeroPress. If you're a cold brew guy, I, that looks like dead simple. The cold brew that that you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, and if if you don't want to like grind your own beans, if literally you've just got a tub of Folgers, throw it in here. Like literally, it's just a little thing that contains coffee. Just dump some in here, fill it up with like nice filtered water or tap water if that's all you got, and you're good, man. You've got cold brew in like twelve hours. You're done. It's See, delicious. my problem is the 12 hours, but but from what I hear, cold yeah. brew is the only way to go if you like iced coffee, if you like cold yeah, coffee. Yeah, and that's why if you drink a lot of coffee, if you can see yourself drinking a lot of cold brew, like get one to try it out. But if you love it, if you're drinking it all the time, if one is not enough and you hate that 12-hour wait time, get two. Rotate them. They're not that expensive. It's It's literally just glass and plastic. You just have to. I just got to check the specs so they fit in the refrigerator downstairs. So, yes, yes, get some. So it's not too tall. So, <laughs> so it doesn't end up being this green screen that we had to move furniture to fit. Yeah. So anyway, we're we're way over. So we're gonna end now. And uh, if you have any questions, again, join us in the WhatsApp group. And look, we hope to see you next week. But again, everything is slow. So we're here. Don't we're not going away. We we plan on continuing yeah. to do this. So just let it go, and we will uh, hopefully see you next week. Bye, everyone. See you. See you, everyone. All right. Let me kill Twitch.